Hello everybody and welcome to another Hearthstone video. I've been playing the wild metagame for a bit and uh, let me tell you, it's a little wild. However, the one thing that I do definitely think is with the new Taverns of Time event, some cards are undeniably busted and some cards need nerfs and other times, you know, general cards in the metagame need to be changed as well. So I basically cobbled up a list of 10 cards that I would change, uh, meaning nerf, none of these are buffs. Uh, and essentially, uh, to also help with the visual aid of this video, I've also literally custom carded all of the changes that I would make to these cards. So I hope you enjoy the little handiwork that I have done. So, starting off, we have a Paladin change. Mech Paladin is one of the best decks, it's in kind of like the top 3, top 4 classes, it has a positive win rate, so I thought we should nerf one of the cards, and what better card to nerf than Radar Detector? This card has been prevalent since it came out, it really revolutionized everything, it's a card draw card, something the Paladin literally cannot have, because god forbid Paladin draw. Uh, so essentially for this one, I changed uh, the number, so instead of scanning for 5 cards at the bottom of your deck, it now only scans 4. This should make it so then, you know, paladins can't just oopsie draw 5 cards and then wombo combo their way to unfairly beating you when you literally should have won anyway. Uh, and basically make it that, you know, it's more of like a, yeah, we can draw some of the weaker cards of our deck and get our tempo going, but not like go too crazy essentially. The next changes that we have are for Shaman. The first one is for Even Shaman which is a pretty prevalent deck and it is not that, it, it, it's a very small nerf. Uh, Anchored Totem is going from 3 health to 2 health. I think that personally uh, this will make it so that it's way more vulnerable to board clears as a whole to hopefully maybe make it easier to actually take out um, the minion itself because if you don't take it out in one or two turns or basically immediately uh, You get so much pressure and that's how you just lose immediately to uh, even shaman So making it that there's a bit more potential to interact with that card before your opponent already has 50,000 taunt minions that also are plus 10 plus 10 I think is a pretty good idea yet again Just a small nerf because I don't think it's actually that crazy of a deck the next card we have for Shaman is Flash of Lightning. Now this one might be a bit drastic, but I do think that this deck is going to be pretty crazy, and especially with the nerfs to uh, discard Warlock, this card as a combo deck will kind of have less competition to right outright like beat it, so it will be a bit stronger, so I think a bigger nerf is necessary. So essentially to th uh, for this card, essentially I'm making it go from 2 mana to 4 mana. This is a mass mana cheat card that is extremely strong and when you play it with the quest line, which you are going to be doing, uh, it essentially makes this card uh, two mana less on every single card you play for the rest of the game. Uh, and that is absolutely insane. Uh, it draws you two cards when you double its effect and makes all nature spells cost two less. I think making it four mana will make it more reasonable and make it that they actually have to, you know, spend a bit more mana on it at the very least. Hopefully making that combo deck just not as crazy as it used to be. The next class that we have is Druid. If you don't know, Druid is one of my long time most hated classes in all of Hearthstone because I came in just before the good old Grand Tournament. So I was privy to essentially just, oh, Hearthstone is just damn druid every game uh, but essentially uh, the cards that I have decided to change are all in my opinion toxic cards and one other card so the one other card is biology project this is a simple nerf from one to two mana nothing really to say here essentially trying to limit the crazy ramp potential of druid decks where essentially like the APM Tony decks as well as the general just mill out uh, strategies as well as literally every single druid strategy because let's be honest. Uh, one could say guff. Oh, I don't uh, nerf guff. Well, there's nothing you can do to guff to really nerf it. Even if you make it 8 mana, 
they're still going to be on 8 mana before you can put up a resistance. So I think making it so they can't get it too early might be able to make it a bit better. The next card that I have on the list is Do Process. This fucking thing. Uh, the main change to this card is that it's going to 3 mana and will no longer make you draw an extra card. So essentially, uh, well, your opponent will not draw an extra card. This will try. Uh, this is in an attempt to make it so then, yes, you yourself can draw extra cards, maybe for a token deck or an aggressive strategy. It's still going to be used for bullshit anyway, where you play Tony and then you play like uh, buff, uh, buff ball shield and the Jailer, and then you destroy your opponent's deck, and then you literally can't take damage and GG no re. It's still going to be played for that because druids are a piece of shit and they don't like fun. But essentially at the same time though, uh, you know, this will try to limit the general mill druid type of strategy. You can't cover everything, but I think this might deter those strategies just a little bit. The next and final change for druid is Floop's Glorious Floop. Oh, Gloop, sorry. Uh, this card has been bullshit since it was born. And essentially the main change I've done to this one is you restore a empty mana crystal instead of gaining one mana. The main reason why this card is a problem in wild is because of the fact that you simply play this, play poison seed, destroy everything on the board, gain 20 million armor with celestial alignment, all your cards cost one, then you wombo combo with the Tony APMs, or the Mechathoons, or the Togwaggles, or literally any OTK of your dreams and just ass blast your opponent to death. And I think this card for a long time has needed to be changed and I think this is the perfect change. However, we've all been there and we all know what's been happening. The good old discard warlock changes. So I have decided on four cards to change. I'll go from kind of less impactful to most impactful. Uh, the le least impactful of these is the Tiny Knight of Evil. This card is now going from gain 2-2 two, two whenever you discard a card to 2-1. Two, the main idea about this is essentially that, yeah, the 2 attack, like, you know, it's still an aggressive card, right? But uh, limiting the amount of health it can get can actually make it so then you can actually get uh, it off the board way easier. I think a minion like this should not scale so quickly with its health. Uh, if you discard three cards with this card as it is, you can't beat it with something like, I don't know, even Warrior, which I think should be the be-all end-all to Warlock. I think even Warrior, control deck, beats Warlock. Warlock beats control, uh, no, combo. Combo beats uh, war uh, Warrior. That's the way that the meta line should basically be. So essentially with this change, I'm hoping that, you know, essentially more decks, especially things like maybe Priest uh, and Mage and other stuff like that will be able to target down this minion way easier so we can bring up the uh, other classes and make it so it's not just Warlock Stone. Uh, the next change is Dark Bargain. This is just going from three mana to four mana. Uh, this card single-handedly enables a lot of random bullshit, whether it's your Hand of Gul'dan, whether it's your Fist of Jurass, uh, Jurass... You know what I'm saying. Uh, or, Soul Barrage, you're just doing so much burst damage, summoning so many minions, and also clearing probably two big threats. And for three mana, I think that's a bit too strong, but I think at four mana, it's still respectable, it's still playable, uh, but just not too OP, because I think none of these should be at like the cheapest they can possibly be. The next card is Soul Barrage. This is kind of a small change, but I think it does drastically change the card. It now goes from dealing six damage randomly split, uh, split upon all enemies to five damage. So what this essentially means is once you do, the, you know, the simple uh, two mana lady and discard your highest cost card, Instead of taking 6 damage and then 12 damage, you take 5 damage and then 15. It's only a 3 damage difference, however I do think that that will really help out in the long run, because with other cards like Fist of Jurassic, such a hard word for me to say for some reason, 
Um, you'll basically slow down the amount of total burn the deck has and hopefully be able to make it so different classes like Priest, for instance, maybe can actually have a leg up on Warlock as well. As if we have two control decks that can beat Warlock, then we're in a kind of good spot where, yeah, it could beat up on other aggro decks, it could beat up on some mid-range decks, but it isn't the be-all end-all. And the final change is to cha uh, Chamber of Vidiscus, which is such a weird name. Essentially, for this change, it is now three mana instead of two, because God forbid, uh, you only draw one card once you discard something, because one, Malkazar's Imp is a thing, and also, the thing you're discarding is already value. Like, three mana, draw three cards, discard one, is already an effect, and that's like a, yeah, okay kind of card. But being able to select any card in your hand that's a dead weight, and do that twice is ridiculously strong. So I think it's very, very necessary to actually really nerf this card. So it only has two durability, draws one card, and is three mana. This will heavily make it harder for actual, you know, crazy bullshit where they use it three times and you're just like, well, I guess I die. Um, however, you still have two of them, they're three mana, but like, you know, you're still gonna, you know, turn two, you know, use the uh, Whisper, you know, summon two, three twos, summon the two, one, discard Soul Barrage, uh, place down the three mana location, you know, trade the two, one into something, discard a Soul Barrage, you know, you're still playing the game and you're still doing really, really well. Uh, so I think at this point, the deck would actually be pretty fair and actually maybe have enough interaction between both sides to where other decks can actually resurface and we can have a bit more of a tighter metagame. Obviously, no, nothing touched Warrior. Uh, I'm very unsure on how to touch Warrior other than, oh, make the two mana, two, two, draw two cards, three mana. Guess you can't play it anymore. Uh, there's The only thing I can really think of is stuff like that. And I feel like that's really, one, uninspired, but two, really really hurts the deck, and I do think it's an interesting deck uh, that kind of should be around, and hopefully with these changes to the metagame, more control and combo style decks will be able to rise up and beat Warrior. And maybe, you know, Warrior being the best deck in the wild actually is a crazy cool thing. But I hope you all had an absolutely wonderful day, and I hope you enjoyed this video a lot. If it, it did entertain you and if it did you know, spark some debates and other stuff like that, please leave your comments down in the description below. And maybe while you're there, give my channel a like and subscribe. I hope you all have an absolutely wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.